Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. We're going to carry on looking at measurement. If you remember, we were looking at surface areas and volumes. So we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of different things in this lesson. And we're starting off by looking at, we were looking at area and perimeter. And then we've been now been looking at volume of right prisms and cylinders. So just to remind you, the volume of a... A volume is a three-dimensional space occupied by um, a volume is a three-dimensional space occupied by an object. So, volume of a right prism or cylinder is calculated by multiplying the area of the base times by the height. So, the area, if you have got a right prism, in other words, that the volume makes uh, that the height makes a 90 degrees angle to the base, then we can say that the volume of the right prism or cylinder is always equal to the area of the base multiplied by the height. So, for example, if we've got a rectangular prism, we can say, okay, fine, well, let's look at this. We need the area of the base multiplied by the height. And do you agree? This is what they call a right prism because of the fact that these angles are 90 degrees here. Okay? So, therefore, we can say, okay, fine, let's do the volume. The volume is the area of the base times the height. So if I had to, I could do a little bit of a dotted line going on here. The area of the base is this bit at the bottom, okay? So the area of the base is equal to 5 times by 8 times by the height, which is in this case 4. So therefore 5 times 8 is 40, and then we're multiplying it by 4, which is going to give you 160 cubic centimeters. So please remember that volume is always, if you think about it, it's area of base times height, but if you want to think of it in this case, would it not be length times breadth times height, right? So that is going to be, in this case, centimeters multiplied by centimeters multiplied by centimeters, which is why we get centimeters cubed. So please remember that the volume, the unit for volume is always whatever the unit is cubed. Okay, please don't forget that. Right, now let's look at this. So this looks a little bit complicated because you think, well, there's this triangle thing here. This isn't a right angle at all, so how am I going to do this? But if you had to think of this as this bit here, this triangle being the bottom of the prism, then do you agree that that would be a 90 degree? Okay, so again we could do area of the base times by the height. But do you agree that what would be the bottom then? The bottom is going to be the area of a triangle. And what is the area of a triangle? Area of the triangle, whoopsie, let me just rewrite that again. So I want you to imagine it's actually on its end, okay? So it would be, oh, wrong red. The area of the triangle equals a half times base times height. So if we're looking just at that shape there, just at that shape there, and we're going to say, well, that's the base and this is now lying down, right? We could stand it up and then it would look something like this, except that I can't draw to save my life, but it would look something like this where there would be the base and then this would be the sides and it would look like something like that. Okay, do you understand? Where this is the bottom is matching this bit here. So this bit here matches this bit here, okay? And this here is the 12 centimeters, okay? So the area of the base is a triangle, which is a half times base times height of that triangle, which in this case is going to be what? It's equals a half times the base, which is eight, times the height, which is three, a half times eight is four, so it's just four times three, which equals 12 centimeters squared, right? But now we have to multiply it by the height. But now obviously this is the height, but it's lying down, so it doesn't feel like the height, but when we put it up on its end, 
then do you agree that this is the height? So if I multiply that by 12, I get 200 and let's try again, 144 cubic centimeters, 144 cubic centimeters. Right, okay, I hope you're cool with that. Let's move on. Now we're gonna do the area of a cylinder. Okay, now remember that, I mean the volume of a cylinder. The volume, okay. Now remember as always, it is the area of the base times by the height, okay? And what is this base? This is a circle, it's a circle. So now remember, it doesn't matter if this is colored in or not, okay, or filled in or not. We're looking at the volume, okay? So that is going to be the area of the base, which in this case is a circle, so it's pi r squared times by the height. And what is r? r, r in pi r squared, r is the radius, okay? So in this case, they've given us a thing that's actually quite easy because they've given us the radius, it's two. So we've got pi times by two squared times by the height of the cylinder, which is four, which is four, two times two is four, four times four is 16, so it's 16 pi. But we're not gonna leave our answer like that. We're actually gonna get out a calculator and we're going to go switch on and we're going to go 16 no we're going to go 16 mm, multiplied by shift pi equals mm, that helped 50.264 um let's round off to one decimal place it's 50 comma so that is equal to 50 comma 3 and then what are the units they are centimeters and what is volume it's always centimeters cubed okay the units cubed okay so that is the volume of the cylinder now we're going to get to something a little bit more complicated and unfortunately for you you actually have to learn this okay the have to learn these formulas. It's very sad, I know, I'm sorry, but you do have to. So if you look at it, do you see, okay, I want you to think of it this way, okay, do you see that it's actually, watch, okay, sorry, I'm going to explain myself in a minute. Let's say that we draw a cube. It's really not the best way to draw a cube, but there you go. And then I put a pot stop in the middle, okay? And I join that. So I join that, and I join that, and you can't really see, but I join that. Okay, so do you see that I've cut away, by doing that, I've cut away this bit of it. Okay, oh, let me just show you better. Let me draw it again, let me draw it again and get it a bit better. Okay, let's erase all ink, let's try again. Um, no, let's draw it bigger, sorry. I just want to show you something because it might help you understand a little bit easier. Okay, so there is a cube, do you agree? There is a cube, all the sides are equal, right? So now let's take my base and then let's take a point in the middle. And then let's join that, okay? So do you see that I'm cutting away all this bit, all that bit, and all that bit on that side, and all this side, and all that side, okay? So normally, normally the area of a cube would be the area of the base multiplied by the height, do you agree? The volume is area of the base multiplied by the height. But now what happens is that it gets a little bit more confusing. Well, not really. It's just that we have to take away some of it, okay? So therefore, 
it becomes one third of the area of the base multiplied by the height. That's what's left. By cutting all this extra bit away, you're only left with one third of the area of the base. Okay, times the height. So in this case, we'd have to assume that there was a perpendicular height, H. Okay, and therefore the volume of this, the volume would be one third multiplied by a squared multiplied by h. Okay, let us have a look at what could possibly be the answer for a total surface area. Do you agree that it, this is a little bit easier to work out? The total surface area is a lot easier to work out for the simple reason, okay, that let me just show you a link. Okay. Do you agree we've got a square? If we had to cover this in paper, do you agree we've got the square at the bottom? So the total surface area is going to be the area of the base plus four times the four times the the sides. There's one, actually three times. There are four sides. There's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, four triangular sides, okay? And if we look at this triangular side as being an example of all the triangular sides, then do you agree that this whole line here, which is the base of the triangle, would be A. This would be the perpendicular height of the triangle, okay? But there are four of them. So the total surface area is going to be the area of the base, which is A squared plus four times the base of this, which is, okay, the area of a triangle, remember, is a half base times the height, so it's a half times by the base A times by this S. But you know what this S is called? The S is called the slant, the slant height. S is called the slant height. So therefore, it is going to be four times a half times a times the slant height s okay which is going to be a squared plus two a s because four times a half is just two and there you go so that is the total surface area of this square pyramid right now let's talk about the triangular prism okay the triangular prism. So now that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the volume of the triangular prism. Okay, so the way it works again is that it's going to be equal to Again, do you agree that it would normally be um, just a second? Sorry, I'm just having a fight with my computer again. Okay, so do you agree that now we have again area? of the base times by the height. And do you agree that if this was a rectangular prism with a base of a triangle, then what would it have been? It would have been the area of the base, which is a half times base times height of the of the triangle multiplied by the height of the prism. Do you agree? But remember, we're cutting bits off, okay? So therefore, the volume in this case is going to be square root 3 over 4 multiplied by the height multiplied by base, the length squared, b squared, okay? Um, assuming that this is an equilateral triangle, which it is. So in this case, for example, we don't know what big H is. So it would be three over four multiplied by big H 
multiplied by 64 because we've got that this is 8. Okay, do you understand that? Okay, now, so that would be the situation at the moment for the volume. Um, for the total area, it would just be four triangles, but we'd actually have to work out what this one's height is. Um, yeah, we are told. Okay, watch him. I'll show you. Um, erase link. Okay, do you agree that we've definitely got four sides with a base of eight and a height of 12? I mean, three sides. What, we've got this one, we've got that one, and we've got this one up here. So they all are a half times by eight times by 12. Plus, we need the area. This is for the total surface area. We need the area of um, the base triangle. Okay, so this is going to be 4 times by 12 plus. Now, to get the area of this, do you agree that every one of these angles is 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle? So therefore, we can actually draw it like this, where we know that this is 8 that this year is 60, that this year is 30, and that's 90. And we could say, well, we need the height, but if you know your special triangles from trig, you'll know that this is supposed to be 2, 1, no, 1 root 3, and the height is this. So what do I have to do here? To get from 8 to 2, I'd have to divide by 4. And to get from here to here, I have to divide by 4. And do you see where that root 3 over 4 comes from as the area of the base? Okay. So do you see that this is going to be root 3 over 4 times by the base squared times by the height? Okay. So this is going to be the area of the base which is going to be, this is my height of the base, it's HB, and it's half base times by the height. So it's a half times by the base of 8 times by the height, which we've just said is root 3 over 4. So this becomes 48 plus, that's 4, and those cancels root Three. So it's 48 plus root 3, um, which we can find out on the calculator. We can go 48 plus root, no, let's delete that, plus root 3 equals, which is 49.73. It equals 49,73 centimeters 49,73 centimeters okay let's move on to the right cone so again we've got the total surface area is going to be the area of the base plus the area of the walls but the interesting about this is obviously the area of the walls makes um, an interesting shape and what it is, is first of all, the area of the base is pi r squared, because it's a circle. The area of the walls comes to a half times 2 pi r h s, where s h is the slant height, okay? So therefore, do you agree that that becomes pi r squared plus this cancels with this, and you get pi are and basically the slant height hs okay and then all you have to do is substitute and unfortunately for you those these are the formula that have to be learned you have to learn them they don't generally give it to you okay the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared okay you need to go and learn that the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared Oh, so now we're supposed to be doing volumes. Okay, so now the volume of the square pyramid is a third times area of the base times height times pyramid. We've already covered this with you. 
The volume of is a third times the area of the base times the height of a pyramid already. Um, or you can think of it as a square root of 3 over 4 times by the height times by the base squared. It's just a different way of doing this because what they're doing is with the third of the area of the base is they're now taking into account the fact that this is a triangle. The volume is again, but the reason you'll see that the reason we've kept it as the first version is because check this out. Square pyramid, a third of the area of the base times the height. Triangular prism, third of the area of the base times the height. Right cone, third times area of the base times height of the cone. Okay, and then notice that this is a third times the total surface area times the radius. Okay, because look here, let me show you. These four pi r squared. Now, do you see that this is the same as saying a third times by r times by the total surface area? Okay. Right, now let's talk about multiplying by a factor of k. So if you have a block and it has a let of these numbers or these letters L times B times H, do you agree that the volume of this would just be the area of the base, which would be left times breadth times by the height, so it's just going to be LVH? Okay. Now let's look at the surface area. Do you agree there's two rectangles, which are LBs? There are two rectangles, which are BHs. And there are two rectangles that are LHs. So the total surface area is going to be 2LB plus 2HB plus 2LH. Okay, which means I could take out a common factor of two, but that's fine. Okay, so that is the basic, basic um, volume and total surface area of a prism. Okay, now it says let's multiply one side by a factor of k, right? So instead of it being, for example, h, it's now going to be 5h. So do you agree the volume in this case is going to be length times breadth times 5 times h, okay, which is 5 length times breadth times height. So do you agree that if this represented, this 5 8 represented the k, then this would be 5, oh no, sorry, then it would be We're saying that this represented the K, then this would be, let's try again. Just the five represents the K, just the five. Then it's going to be K LBH. Okay, do you understand that? Now, let's look at the total surface area. Okay, the 5 represents a K. So the total surface area in this case is going to be length times breadth, okay, plus breadth times 5H, breadth times 5 times H, plus length times 5 times H, length times 5 times H. Okay, so do you see that that changes considerably from the 2? Okay, and oh, sorry, yeah, we also have two of those. So it's two times this, two times this, and two times this. Okay, do you see that? So it changes considerably, okay? And what is it changing by? It's changing by the value of k. So therefore, this would be 2lb plus 2kbh plus 2klh. Okay. So you can see that you need to multiply each of these, well, actually two of these, by the factor of k, whereas the volume just multiply entirely by the factor of k. Right, um, sorry, just a second, I just need to cough, just a second.
now let's do multiplying two sides of effective care. So we multiply two sides of effective care. So the volume here is LBH, do you agree? And the total surface is going to be 2LB plus 2BH plus 2LH. Excellent. Now let's look at the volume of this. Do you agree that it's 5L times B times 5H, okay? So it's 5L times B times 5H, which can be written as 5 squared LBH. So 5 is K, in this case it's K squared LBH. So that's the effect of multiplying this by a factor of K. You're multiplying it effectively by K squared. Now let's talk about the total surface area. It is going to be 2 times 5L times B plus 2 times B times 5H, B times 5H, plus 2 times 5L times 5H, which is going to be 10LB plus 10BH plus 5 times 5 is 25 times by 2 is 50, 50. Okay, so you can see that multiplying two sides by factor of k makes quite a big difference, okay? So you need to be aware of what the changes are and then include them in your multiplication and your calculations, okay? Okay, multiplying all three sides by a factor of k. So the volume is again going to be LBH. And the surface area here is going to be 2LB plus 2BH plus 2LH. Okay, but the volume. What is the volume? Your volume here is going to be length times breadth times height. But that's 5L multiplied by 5B multiplied by 5H. So 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125 LBH. Okay, now the total surface area, total surface area is going to be what? It is going to be two times this multiplied by this. So it's going to be 5L multiplied by 5H plus two times this times this, which is going to be 5B times 5H plus two times 5L times 5B, so it's 5L times 5B, which is going to be 25 times 2 is 50LH plus 50BH plus 50LB. There we go. Right, now we get to do proper exam type examples. So let's get stuck in with that straight away. So it says a concrete gate post comprises a rectangular prism having a square base and a pyramid at the top as shown in the diagram below. The length of the sides, oh, look at that, they gave us the formula. That's quite nice of them. It says the length of the side of the base is 30 centimeters and the height of the rectangular section is 150. And then they tell you the perpendicular height of the pyramid section is eight centimeters. Next, they say calculate the volume of the concrete required to make one post. But how nice is it that they've made, given us the volume of a pyramid? So now we can work out the air volume of the pyramid and then we can add it to the volume of a rectangular prism and then we can know the volume of the concrete. So let's do that. We've got the volume of the prism, the the rectangular prism is obviously area of base times by the perpendicular height. Okay, so the area of the base is going to be 30 multiplied by 30 multiplied by the perpendicular height of 150. So 30 times 30 is going to be 900 times by 150. So let's us just get out our calculator. So we're going to go 900 multiplied by 150. 
50 equals 135,000 135, centimeters squared cubed. But then we have to add this little pyramid at the top. And the volume of the pyramid is what? What did they give us? They said it is one third of the area of the base times by the height. And they've beautifully given us the height. It's eight centimeters. So let's work out the area of the base. Do you agree that that is 30 centimeters and that's 30 centimeters? So therefore it's going to be the volume is going to be a half times by 30 squared, okay, times by the height of eight. So therefore, let's pop that in our calculator and we've got 30 squared times 8 times 0.5 equals 3,600 cubic centimeters. So do you agree that the total volume of this thing is 135,000, no, 138,600 cubic centimeters. Sure, that is quite a lot of cubic centimeters to be filling up with concrete. So that there is the concrete, okay? Now, now let us look at this surface area of the pyramid section. Just they want the surface area of the pyramid section. That's quite nice. They don't want the whole surface area of the whole thing. So we're going to use the formula that they gave us, okay? We are going to use it. So we just need to um, not erase all ink. Let us just, mm, okay. I just want to read something that says the length of the sides of the base, the city center, the height of the rectangular prism 150. The perpendicular to the pyramid section is 8. It says the concrete pose compared, right? That's 8. Oh, okay, right. Okay, so now we need to work out. This gets a little bit more complicated. So let us talk about this, okay? They want the surface area of the pyramid section, but we need to work some stuff out first. Okay, so let me show you what's going on. Okay. So if I had to draw this or try and draw it, okay. Do you agree that that would more or less be what the pyramid would look like? More or less, okay. And then we drop a perpendicular height down. Okay, so that's 90 degrees, okay? We want the slant height because it says the surface area is the area of the base, which is obviously going to be 30 multiplied by 30, okay? Type plus half the perimeter of the base times by the slant height. Now the slant height do you agree that the slant height is this length here? This bit here is the slant height from there to there, and that's perpendicular. But we don't know what that slant height is. But do you agree that we do know, we do know that this is 8, okay? Because that is the height they told us. And we also know that this is 15 because the whole of this is 30 and when you drop that down perfectly in the middle, that is 15. So therefore we can work out what the slant height is and then using this formula, we can work out the surface area of the pyramid section of the post. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing, okay? Um, so that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. Let's do that. So we can use Pythagoras to work out the slant height. Okay. So we've got Pythagoras says that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared 
which is going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 15 squared, which is the square root of 64 plus, I think it's 225, let's just check, 15 squared equals, it is 225, plus 64 equals, and then we're going to square root the answer, and we end up with 17. Yay! So the slant height is 17. So that's 2 to 5, which equals 17. Okay, awesome. So now do you agree that we can say the area of the base? We want to calculate the surface of the pyramid section of the post. Okay, it does say the total surface area of a pyramid is the area of the base times the half the pyramid of the a base, pyramid of the base times the slant height. It does worry me about the fact that we can't see the base area of the pyramid, but they did just work, say, calculate the surface of the pyramid section. And this is a total surface area pyramid. So I think I only need to work out the bit that we can see, which is the outer bit, not the bottom bit, okay? So if that's the case, then do you agree what I'm gonna be doing is ignoring the base, and I'm only gonna be working out this bit here, half the perimeter of the base times by the slant height. So it's going to be a half times the perimeter of the base, which is going to be 30 times by 4, which is 120 centimeters, times by the slant height, which in this case is 17. So that is going to be 60 times 17. So we need a calculator for this. So we get times 60 equals 1020. So therefore this is 1020 is just the surface area, sorry, centimeters squared. So this is the surface area just of the parts of the perimeter you can see at the top of this long sum. So that's going to be 1020 centimeters squared. Okay, now it says if the sides of the base is halved, how many posts have been the same design of the original as original can be made with the same volume of concrete in the original post? Okay, so let's talk about how we worked out the volume. I just need to clear this. Um, okay. Let's talk about how we worked out the volume. Okay, so the volume of the cylinder, the volume, was going to be um, base squared, so side squared, um, plus one third side squared, oopsie, side squared h, okay, so this, oh sorry, the, no, I'm wrong, oh, sorry, it's side squared h, the volume is side squared h, because it's not just the base, but it's the base times the height, so it's side squared h plus a third times the area of the base, which is side squared times the perpendicular height. Okay, that is the equation for the volume. Now it says, if the volume of the sides of the base, sorry, the length of the sides of the base is suddenly halved. Okay, so now we've got a half S all squared, H plus a third S over two all squared, and then H. Okay. So do you agree that becomes um, S squared H over 4 plus S squared H over, what is that? 4 and 3 is 12. So it's just 3 times 4. Take out a common factor of a quarter and you're left with S squared H plus S squared H over three. 
So do you agree that the original volume was S squared H plus S squared H over three, but now because of the way it's been manipulated, the volume is now quarter of the original. So it says if the length of size is halved, how many posts having the same design can be made? So it's going to be four times as many. So you multiply it by four and then you'd get the answer. And that grade tens is your maths for today. Um, thank you very much for joining us and I hope that you'll join us further in the next lessons. Have a great day. Cheers.